Okay, so we have a new topic, which is um, linear maps. And there's um, two words there, linear and maps. And so we're first gonna start with just the concept of a map. And that is described in a tutorial at the end of the previous chapter that's on vector spaces. And uh, this is a topic that, we, that if you've taken an introduction to computation, we've gone over this. This is basically um, a, a similar version to that. Now, so um, a linear map is the part that's particular to vector spaces. So, but initially, so a map is um, a pairing between two sets. You have a domain, say, you have two sets. The one's the domain called the domain and one's called the co-domain. And here, like the, we're gonna take A to be just the set with the numbers one, two, three, and B to be the set with ABC, <clears throat> the letters ABC. And so eventually we'll do our sets A and B will be vector spaces, but the concepts of a map is, doesn't depend on that. So now a map <clears throat> gives to every, assigns to every, element of the domain, every member to each one, two, three, and some element of the codomain. So um, you could specify like if we had a map F, this is an arrow diagram that we're gonna make. Like we could assign um, to one B to two A and to three C. So, and we could represent this as, as a set of ordered pairs. Now, what makes it a map is, I mean, if I just drew lines here, I could, I might draw a map or I might not draw a map. The, the one thing is every element of the domain has to have a partner in the codomain. So, so there has to be one of these ordered pairs for every element of the codomain. It can fail to be a map if you left one off. The other way it could be failed to be a map is if you had two arrows going from one of the elements here. So if I had a three going to, to, be, to be here, that wouldn't be a map because I'd have sort of 3C and 3B and, and there has to be a single part, every domain element has to have a single partner. So those two requirements, um, every, domain element um, has a partner and um, no, let me see, has a partner and no domain element has more than one partner. That that's that's the requ that's the required to make um, this this a map. A pairing, like if I just wrote down ordered pairs, it might or might not be a map depending on whether there was one for each domain element and whether I repeated one of the domain elements. Okay, okay. So that's the idea of a um, map. And you can write, oh, let me just, you could write the definition formally here um, that th this definition here is the um, condition that you can't have more than two domain elements. What it's saying is, if I pick out two um, domain elements, x1 and x2, so I just pick out two x1 and x2, then potentially I have, you know, x1 is going to have a partner, x2 is going to have a partner. And if it turns out that I say if I've ran, I happen to have selected the same the same one. It's always the case that the partners will be the same. If they were the same and the partners were different, then I'd have this case where I'd have one domain element and two partners, which is disallowed. So this formal sort of property enables you to deal with checking whether something's a map or not. Um, and let's see what other. Oh yeah, sometimes in the text. Um, it will, sometimes you, 
here's another case of a map. Like this, so here's another domain and codomain. And the idea here is it's okay if one of the, the codomain elements isn't paired. And, but we say the, the, the word range, this is the word range is used to be the elements that, that, that actually are partners. So the range here would be B, C, and D. So the range doesn't, doesn't necessarily include all, you can see that the range is a subset or part of the codomain. Okay, and there's a picture of the map there. And let's see, okay. We're gonna go and, and see, um, then there's two properties of maps we wanna check that, that are gonna be important when we come back to linear algebra. The property of a map being onto and the property of the map being one-to-one. -one. And then, so a map can have either one of these or the other, one and not the other, or neither or both of them. Um, so let's, un we need to understand what each of these two properties is. Um, the first one here, if a map is onto, it means that every codomain element is a partner. So here, this map is onto because A, B, and C are all partners. But this map is not onto because A is not, that isn't the partner of any, any element. You can see that if a map is onto the domain for finite sets like this, the domain has to be larger than or equal to uh, the codomain B, but it doesn't have to be. For example, um, I could define a map one, two, three, four, five, six, like this. So this is, this is not, not onto because four and six aren't partners. Okay, so that's, that's how it, it says for every codomain element, there has to be a domain element that, that points to it. And that's the essence of what this formal definition says is that for each Y in the codomain, there's at least one element in the domain such that that element, that element X um, points to or leads to the um, element Y. And, this, and in this particular case, the range of the function equals the codomain. So for an onto function, you can see the range, like if this is the function G, the, the range of G here is gonna equal B. The, the, this is the range and this is the codomain. Okay, the second property is one-to-oneness. And one to oneness says that no codomain element can have more can be the can be the part cannot be the partner of more than one domain element. So here, this is also not one to one because five has more elements. Um, point five has three, all the elements pointing to it, and that's disallowed by being one to one. This one is one to one because no codomain element has two elements. And this is onto and one-to-one. -one. So this one is both one-to-one -one and onto because um, it's onto because ABC all have, are the partners of some uh, domain element, but it's also one-to-one -one because no one, no codomain element has two, is, is double, doubling up and having two partners. So there's a, and you can, um, so this map is again, not onto, 
but it's also, but it is one to one. Maybe I have another example here. Oh, yes, maybe I should give you one more example of a map that is onto, but not one to one. So this map is onto because everyone in the co-domain has a is pointed to has a has a partner in the domain, but it's not one to one because number item th element three here is pointed has the partner of two co-domain elements. Okay, so you could so there's four possibilities either um, both onto both what they're they're one to one and onto. Um, neither onto neither one to one or one property the other. Okay, now you can, there's a um, you can sort of see that there's like a um, a parallel between the property of a thing being a map, which is sort of the reverse. It's sort of like it's the reverse idea that that to be a map, every element of the domain has to have an arrow going from it. To be on to be um, onto every element of the codomain has to have an arrow going into it. Now to be one to one is um, <clears throat> sort of the property that nothing can but nothing can <clears throat> um, bunch up. Like you can have this. Well, if you reverse it around for the codomain element, that's sort of the opposite property that you can't have one of these elements that divides up. And you can see that if I wanted to sort of turn these arrows around, if either of these properties failed to be true. I couldn't turn these arrows around and have a map. So, and, and if I take a domain and codomain and switch them and want the codomain to be the domain and the domain to be the codomain and then flip the arrows, well, you can see that if, if, it, if it wasn't onto, like here, and I tried to flip the arrows going backwards, well, four could go to one, six could go to two, seven could go to three, but five, but five isn't paired with anything. So that means that I'd that I to be, if I want to just flip the arrows and have a map, it has to be onto. Otherwise, I won't know where F goes. But it also has to be um, one to one because if it's not one to one, then f this three would end up. If I flip the arrows, would go to both three and four, and that would violate the definition of a map. So the map where I flip the arrows reverse direction of arrows. Also, if I was giving a map as like um, one, this what map one A, two B, two, let me do something more. Two C, three B. And this was the map one, two, three. Well, this was um, these three ordered pairs, then reversing the direction of the arrows is equivalent to um, changing the order of the ordered pairs here, um, which I didn't do there. Well, so I can only do this and have the result be a map between the co-domain here of ABC and the domain and the, the previous domain of one, two, three, I can only do that if the map is one to one and onto. Now, if I can do that, it, so, th so that if this first map is one to one and onto, then I can reverse the arrows and we call this map the inverse map. And we use this notation inverse because in when I do multiplicative inverses, five minus five is one over five and multiplicative multiplicatively for numbers, five times one over five is one because I can multiply numbers. So this notation, this is not true. Like F inverse is not over, right? What's not true is that this notation does not mean somehow one over F. All it means is that there's some way to combine maps so that if I combine this map and this map, I get somehow something like the identity. That's what this sort of 
um, notation implies, and it also implies there's some way to combine maps. So this 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 reverse the direction of arrows only is it's called this is called the inverse map if it exists and it only exists if the maps are one to one and on to okay so the question then becomes how can i combine maps and so let's look at and see if i want to have a map from a to b and then and then a map from b to c though that's the case when i can combine them So let's say that I had So these arrows define f, these arrows define g. Now, this is the only case that I this is the only case that I can uh, combine maps is it's clear that the codomain of f has to equal the domain of G. Otherwise, you can't combine the two maps. And we're going to call combine the two maps composition. And you've seen this before under this name where F and G were functions between numbers. Um, and, and they were given by formulas. And we can, we can see how that works out here too. Uh, because the, the functional notation like in numbers, you would have something like y equals f of x, or f of x, say, is equal to some formula like x plus 2. And then you might have um, z equals g of y, which equals, say, y squared. And then I could put these, I could start with, you, I could think of this as taking, you know, when I, when I would, I would, put one formula on the other. So I have f of x and g of x, or I can call it the name because I'm going to I'm going to put the y in there. So I could have x plus 2 is going to go um, rather x here for numbers. Go, x goes to x plus 2. And this is sort of the y for, for f. And then we we're going to take this y and make it go to x plus 2 squared this is this one here so this is g and you this idea of substituting one form the other this this is a this goes by the name of composition and it's really the same idea as this one here except here we're not so much interested in formulas and um numbers because we're, we're, our sets are going to be vector spaces eventually and here we have um just our you know sets of different numbers um okay so how do we define the composition? Well, first of all, this, this thing has a name and it's like F is first and G is second. So the name of this is G circle F or G composed with F. So this is first and this is second. Well, um, the formula that defines this is G of F of X. Because you you x you start with x you go to x plus two then g uh, you take the square of that so the idea is in this diagram f was on the left and g was on the right but that's the opposite order in the name here of of the of the name of g circle f okay well how do we do it with these with this map here. Um, well, I sort of left, let me see if I can scrunch it up down here a little bit so you can see. Um, so I can keep this in view. The idea here is the G circle F is the map from one, two, three to four, five, six. So if this was A, B and C. This is A and this is C. And the idea then is that you you can um, 
follow the lines here. So one goes to C and C goes to five. So one goes to five and two goes to B and B goes to six. So two goes to six and three goes to A and A goes to four. So three goes to four. So this is the map G circle F that first acts with F and then acts with G. It's like a relay race, you know, you're carrying a, carrying a baton or something and you just pass it off here and keep going. And um, so there's a three set diagram that illustrates the two functions and how they interact, two maps. And this one, which is the actual map produced because it just has a domain and a codomain. Um, okay, well, it's going to, it's going to turn out the interest in composition is going to be important because when we get to it, um, the lin um, linear maps uh, can be composed. We haven't defined linear map yet, but they can be composed. Linear maps are maps between vector spaces and, and uh, um, are represented by matrices. So far, matrices haven't played a central role. We, we, our, we've had two topics, linear systems and vector spaces. And vectors obviously have played a role in, in both. Um, but in chapter three, we introduced matrices and they, they've, inter they've sort of been helpful in the sense we had an augmented matrix. We looked at a matrix um, version of a linear system. And then we had uh, and then we had vectors, but matrices apart from that haven't played a central role. But here they play a much more central role in this topic because ma every map, the action of every map, can be represented by a matrix, and every matrix produces a map. So, for composition and for ma and for maps, the, they're going to matrices are going to be sort of the primary. Um, object that we'll be looking at. Um, and then th that will bring into play those last topics in vector spaces when we saw that we could, we could define the rank of a matrix as the dimension of the row space or the column space. And so those will end up, all those terms, rank and dimension, will all play roles in linear maps. So we'll, we'll pick, so this topic sort of picks up a lot of the previous stuff on vector spaces as well as linear systems because a linear system um, has a solution um, set, it, it, a homogeneous linear system sort of ident, its solution set is a, is a vector space. It's a subspace. Like if I have a three column vectors and I have a linear system, it identifies a subspace of the um, vectors that are solution sets. Well, it's gonna turn out that there's a connection then that between lin linear systems um, being effectively like maps that sort of select out um, a subspace as a solution space. And you can extend that to the, the, the fact that um, a, a non-homogeneous linear system that has a constant term can be represented as just that constant vector plus a solution of the homogeneous equation. So you have sort of like the, the ve a vector space hidden inside every um, um, linear system. And even when you just have a single uh, solution, the, the, you can, there's gonna be a, um, a vector space, there's a vector space with just the zero and that a vector and that corresponds to the case when you um, just have a single solution of the linear system. Okay, well, let me um, 